The Sanctum is what separates Gods Unchained from every other card game out there, and yet I don't know a single person that can tell me every single card in the Sanctum off the top of their head. And this makes sense, there's 20 cards and most of them are unimportant. However, there are a bunch of cards that are very much worth remembering. I'm going to break down the Sanctum for you guys, show you the most important key cards to remember, show you some tips and tricks, and then show you a real world example of how it won me a tournament match just the other day. Here are the five Sanctum decks. I've ordered them conveniently for you in order of importance of remembering. However, the Sanctum is very situational. If you're up against Hidden Rush or against a Relic combo deck, getting some extra frontliners is the most important thing. If you need a little extra reach, getting the Lambasting Wand can always be helpful, etc. So it's not always top to bottom going to be the most important. However, the Answers deck is really the most important deck to memorize because this one has the Relic Removal, which is useful in almost every game, and it has Volka's Discovery, which can get rid of Sleep, and also can get rid of Hidden. So two very key things you can get rid of with Volka's Discovery, so the Answers deck is extremely important to memorize. The Removal deck I have listed second because the Rune of Fire is one of the nastiest cards and the most versatile cards in the entire Sanctum, you get to deal three damage to any character for two mana. That's a lot of damage. It's very versatile. You can kill a creature. You can use it to hit their face for a little extra burn damage. It's very, very flexible. Form of Power also gets to go face while killing a creature. So that's also helpful. Getting the Archer is always helpful. It's 15 favor and a one mana card that can do a one ping. That one ping can actually save your life a lot of times. You can do a couple damage to a creature, you leave it alive, it's a 5-1, and then boom, you can finish it off for one extra mana. So, very helpful card here. Then we have the value deck, which basically the way I can remember this one, value, you're just drawing cards. Literally all the value deck is just draw cards. You can draw cards with all of these, however the Valve Champions is obviously the most versatile. You can also use this to deal two damage to a face or to a creature, so very helpful, much like the Rune of Fire. And you can even heal your god for four if you're in certain mashups where you need that extra health. We mentioned the Defender's deck is all frontliner, so that's an easy one to memorize. Defender, frontline. However, the Rune of Strength, again, is another card that can be used offensively instead of just defensively. Yes, it gives frontline, but it's also give plus two, plus two to a creature, which is pretty nuts for two mana. So the Rune of Strength, definitely one of the strongest cards in the Sanctum, along with that Rune of Fire. And now the Threats deck, honestly, is not worth remembering at all. None of these cards really ever see play. Uh, the Lambasting Wand is probably the best card in here. Enraged Ally is decent if you just need an extra body. Both of these have one health and they just die pretty quickly. However, again, situationally, maybe okay. So just the other day I was playing in this tournament. It's Party Boy Craig's tournament. It's an open deck list format with a sideboard. So we know exactly what deck our opponents are playing and they know what we're playing. I knew that he's playing two Necroceptors, and in my main deck, I did not include any Relic Removal, and in my sideboard, I included one Ico. So that gets rid of one Necroceptor. However, his deck's going to be very problematic for me if I can't remove the second Necroceptor, because he also plays Corpse Explosion, so the Necroceptor just spits out two twos with Leech every single turn. They're Nethers. They can eventually be Corpse Exploded if I don't keep the board clear. So finding Relic Removal in this match was the most important thing and the only thing I cared about doing. However, you'll notice there is no Relic Removal in the Sanctum. So what do we do? Here we can see the Rune of Life is in the Sanctum. That is the Answers deck. If we want to get an answer, a Relic Remover, it's going to be in the Answers deck, which means we need to remove the Answers deck. It will then be replaced with either Removal or Value, and then Answers will now be at the bottom, and after someone draws a card again, Answers will then have a chance to show back up, and you'll have a 2 in 7 chance of drawing the Relic Removal, because there's only 3 cards left in the Answers deck, and there's 4 cards left in whatever other deck presumably is out there. That gives me a 30% chance to get Relic Removal. And in this match, it's literally life or death that we find it. So here we go ahead and we scoop up that Rune of Life immediately. And now we see the Answers deck is at the bottom. 
this is exactly when he plays the Necroceptor. So, we knew what we had to do. We had to get the Rune of Life. And a few turns later, he falls into our trap. And he buys the Ambitious Adventurer, which means another deck is now going to get added back into the Sanctum. And boom. There she is. The Wiccan Trapper. He has sealed his own fate. Now, I'm still down bad, but uh, we're going to be able to get that relic removed here. We only have 10 favor. We need 13. So this makes my choice pretty easy here for what I'm going to do. I want to gain favor. I need to have enough mana left over after I gain favor because I'm going to slam down that Wiccan Trapper here. We pick it up. We slam it down. And there goes his relic. Now, eventually, after a long and scary battle, I was down to five health. Uh, we needed to worry about a number of things, including Corpse Explosion, his Therial having God Blitz. However, we managed to pull it off. We get Avatar of War. We've just been healing left and right. Pretty nuts. He's down to seven. All we need to do is find an Agrios. All we need to do is find an Agrios. So now he's healed a bunch. Uh, really though, still just looking for an Agrios. Finally we find an Agrios in the bottom of the deck. Slam down the Demon Prince. And that is lethal. Whew. But all in all, none of that would have happened if not for knowing where the Relic Removal was in the Sanctum at all times. And it just so happens that literally right before this tournament match, I had just read an article called Mastering the Sanctum by my teammate H. Payne, just published over on Aqua.xyz. And in it, he quite literally gives the exact scenario of saying, let's pretend our opponent is running an oppressive Necroceptor or a Relic against us. You're not sure what the quickest path is to acquiring Relicate. Quite literally shows the Rune of Life in the here and says, uh, based on the above image, you must first purchase the Rune of Life. That is literally the exact scenario I found myself in right after reading this article. And because I had just read it, I immediately snatched up that Rune of Life when I saw it and then got the Wiccan Trapper. And after the match, I gave a big thanks to H. Payne for having written that article because if it wasn't for that, maybe I would have missed the play to get the Relicate as quick as possible. Today's video is sponsored by Aqua.xyz, the best marketplace for Web3 gaming. And this article is on there along with other articles written by my team, Infinite Mana. There's a link in the description below to this article if you want to check it out, Mastering the Sanctum by H. Payne. But there's a bunch of articles on Aqua's website. They also have cards for Gods Unchained and other games on IMX as well. A big thanks to Aqua for sponsoring today's video and make sure you check them out. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure you memorize these cards, these decks, hit the important ones, keep them in your memory, and win some more games.